Welcome to City League Sports, the show where we give homage to all the special people that make the Columbus City League Sports amazing. Former player, coach, parent, Coach Sullinger is joining the show here today. I am your host, Dr. Vince Clarino, and I am excited to take you down this memory lane with our guest today. So, Coach, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. everybody. Yes, indeed. It's get, good to be back. I, I love it. Hey, look, so, Coach, we get a half an hour with you here today, and and, and I know you like we can we cannot get your entire body of work into thirty minutes, but we're going to have a lot of fun. And I know people want to hear a lot of great stories that you have, right? And so, so I'm just going to dive us right in, like from the very beginning here, okay? I was reading an article, mm-hmm. and so I don't know if most people even know that your, that, that your name is James Sullinger. Yes. I, I, I would say that probably 99% of the people probably think your actual name is Sach, Sach. right? Yeah. And, yeah. and so, uh, so, so give us the quick window. Because I, because I read about your father. Yes. Right? So so give everyone real quick, where does the nickname Satch come from? Well, my dad played uh, professional basketball before blacks were allowed okay. in the NBA. And he played for the Sioux City, Iowa Colored Ghost. Nice. Okay. And so they said when my dad walked down the street, he had real big hands. and said it looked like he had a suitcase at the end of his arms. Ain't that something? So they start calling my dad Suitcase Sully. Suitcase Sully. And so I'm the oldest son, so after suitcase comes a satchel. Yes, indeed. And my little brother Harold was brief for briefcase. There you go. So if I was ever called James, I was getting my butt whipped. You knew something was wrong that day. (laughs) Got it. Yes, indeed. So, 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 hey, hey, look, when I read that, man, um, it it tickled me inside, mm-hmm. man. It, it gave me that because you know what? Um, it's it's nice to hear sometimes, right? Because because you 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 you're like you're known as Satch now, mm-hmm. right? And and the beauty of that gives you for whatever it gives you a connection, right, to your father's past. Right. It gives you a connection to your past. Um, you've been Satch for as long as you can ever remember, I think, right? right I mean, right. You know, and and that's become a part of who you are. Everyone I know when they speak to you, they always ask me, "Hey, you know, do you know Satch?" Satch, mm-hmm. those types of things. So. I want to dive right in. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking fast because I know we got a lot, so I'm going to slow down myself here. I want to dive right in. Mm-hmm. You graduated Columbus City Schools. 1967, Columbus, 1967, South High School. Say Columbus South High School. Right. Um, give everybody a quick snapshot. Sash Sullinger, 1960s. South High School. Give us all a little, a little, a little window. What, what, what was going on in your world back then? Give us a little. Well, that. you know, uh, typical teenage stuff. You know, peer pressure. We were coming through the uh, the civil rights movement. Okay. Uh, in the sixties. Yeah. And we were being influenced by uh, 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 Malcolm uh, X, mm. uh, Cassius. Back then, it was Cassius Clay. Yes, indeed. He turned over to, to Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Uh, Dr. King, certainly. Uh, Fred Hampton, okay. the Black Panthers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and at the same time, uh, going through uh, South High School, which was predominantly white at the time. Okay, and uh, it was before busing, and we walked in uh, to South from uh, uh, driving park area. Okay, and that was a long walk, but uh, yeah. I had some good. I had some good. Uh, days at South High School. Uh, some good teachers, uh, friendships that lasted to this day. Nice. Uh, that that still last to this day okay. with the Osbournes, Jim Osbournes, yeah. and Dan Hoffman's, and yeah. uh, uh, Scotts, and uh, uh, Bob Whites, and mm-hmm. all those South High graduates, so, and Mo Mo Hubert, and yeah. you know, some Richie yeah. Bolden. We all were in school together, yeah. so yeah. it was a it was a good time. And it's nice to hear Richie's name too, man. Shout out to Richie. He was doing some track coaching and stuff in the yeah. city league for a long yeah. time. Yeah, we we were we were very close, and we're still close to this day. Yeah, uh, we don't see each other often. But you know you're but out you, there though. But when we're together, it's like no time is it uh, uh, elapsed between us. Yeah. We pick it right up and, and we move on. So there was some really good times. Basketball wise, uh, I had a really good time mm-hmm. with uh, uh, Coach Comer. Okay. And then my senior year, Dick Ricketts yeah. came in. Yeah. And uh, Coach Ricketts and I didn't get along very well. And, uh, and that happens sometimes. It, it happens, yeah. you know, and, and that's why I believe in the transfer rule. Okay. You know, sometimes yeah. it's just uh, just, just personalities connect. just don't, don't, yeah. don't, 
don't mesh. Certainly. And it happened to be my senior year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but, you know, I made through that. He taught me, uh, one thing that, that Coach Ricketts taught me was n- how to n- never quit. Mm. Never quit. Start right. something, finish it. Yes, I don't did. care how bad things are. And our relationship wasn't that good. Right. But I stuck it out. Certainly. And I drew on that experience the rest of my life that if I could make it through what I thought was my world coming to an end right. as a kid. Certainly. You know, and and at that time it was real. Right. Yes. And I did. look back and say, oh, that wasn't nothing but a hiccup in the road. That's right. But if I could make it through that. Mm-hmm and learn not to quit, then I could do anything that I put my mind to. Certain, And each one of those experiences means something. Mm-hmm. That's a very, you know, like, like that's an old school mentality. I, I wish more young parents and young people could adopt the energy of when, you, you know, you, you finish what you start. Mm-hmm. Because, it, you know, it, this generation, uh, we, we, like, it's so easy to quit. And, and, and you know, and, and we, we won't go too deep down that rabbit hole because I know we can, especially, you know, being mm-hmm. basketball guys. Um, but 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 I want I want to throw a name out at you also, mm-hmm. and you tell me what this name means to you. And I and I and I hope I got the name right. Mm-hmm. Pat Penn. Love him. Pat Penn saved my life. Okay. Uh, like I said, I didn't have a good high school senior year. Okay. So I didn't go off to college. Okay. And uh, I started working and start realizing that. Uh, uh, my size was going to make me do. Let me give you an example. I was working at this place called Mill Bar, okay. where we made bombs mm. for the government. Okay, because it was during the Vietnam War. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I got hired to work from eleven to seven. I worked eleven at night to seven in the morning. Okay, and I was making good money. Certainly. And I was working over there. I had my little forklift, and I was moving parts. And the one guy said. Where's your buddy? I said, my buddy. I said, nobody's over here with me. It's just me. Yeah. He said, the last person that had this job had two people and a tow motor. So I realized then my size, people said, well, we can yeah. utilize it. Well, I decided then, I said, well, you know, do I really want to use my body right. to make a living rather than my head, my Sir, brain? Yeah. And so that's when Pat Penn stepped into my life. Yeah. And, and let me tell you something. Pat Penn saved a whole lot of us okay. that were right at the fork in the road. Mm-hmm. Could and have we went either way. Either way. Yeah. And he saved us. And and my whole life after that changed. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have met my wife. There you go. Who I've been with for 47 years. Yes, indeed. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a whole lot of things he's afforded me. Right, right. And if I have one player that feels the way I feel about me, the way I feel about Pat Penn, yeah. then I would have had a successful career. Oh, wow. That's saying a lot. And, and, and let me share with all of our listeners, um, because we got so much to cover here today. Like I said, man, your body of work. But but Pat Penn, um, former high school coach, Central Ohio, goes on, coaches at Oberlin, brings you to Oberlin as well as mm-hmm. as, as a student. Um, and then, and then, and then, like you share, I mean, I, I can't put it any better than you've been able to put it. The relationship between a coach and a player, when you when you're able to have that type of connection, mm-hmm. where here you sit, you know, some thirty, forty, fifty years later, and you can still say, "Hey, look, this person was a meaningful and integral part of my journey." Right? I love that man. Yeah, and, and so, 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 so then, so then, you know. I don't want to focus too much on Oberlin today mm-hmm. as you're playing years. Mm-hmm. And because like I said, there's a lot of other, I think mm-hmm. really good stuff that I want to get to, but, but you coached here in Columbus in the city league, you coached at uh, Beechcroft, mm-hmm. you coached at Northland high school, East, East high school, Linmore, um, Reynolds, Linmore. Right. So, 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 so you got all of these stops in the city league. And, and so he, here's kind of what, what I like, like walk everyone through. This is a, this is a big decision you mm-hmm. made. But I, I I think coaches and parents. So now you're gonna wear two hats for me, if you mm-hmm. will. You're gonna wear head. You're gonna wear the head coaching hat for a moment, mm-hmm. and I also want you to wear your parent hat mm-hmm. for a moment with this next question. Okay. It's 2009. Mm-hmm. Northland High School is going into a district semifinal game at 24 and 0. Mm-hmm. Hadn't lost a game all season. Mm-hmm. They got a kid on their team that everybody called Big Sully. 
That's my son. Yes, indeed. Your son, who was a phenomenal basketball player, mm -hmm. Mr. Ohio, and, and we're going to get him on the show one day and, and, and give him his roses as well. But but your son is on the team. You're going into this game, and then something happens at school, grade-wise, academically. We, and that's not important, all the details of that. But you make the decision. He's not going to play. He's not going to play that night. This is what Pat Ben taught me. So 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 give 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 everyone the lens and the thinking on the other side, coach and parent. Because here you you know, on top of you being this this phenomenal winning coach, you also are a dad to mm -hmm. a son who you're holding responsible and for for your family's expectations. Mm -hmm. So you sitting that night and then you share the rest. F f f well, fill in for everybody so they can understand how well, dynamic. Pat that Penn was. taught me this in Oberlin College. Okay, you got to deal with the whole person. If you just deal with the athletic side of a kid, that's about a quarter of who he is. Mm, you got the social, emotional, you, you know, and the citizenship side. And I started to realize you play the game the way you live your life. And I can hide lack of accountability first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. But the fourth quarter, when pressure hits, what's normal comes out. Mm. And if what's normal is lack of accountability, then you're not going to be accountable at crunch time. Right. If I'm going to lose a game, I want to lose a game because we deserve to lose. Right. I don't want to lose a game because we beat ourselves. Right. So how can I solve that? Well, you got to deal with the whole person. If I dealt with just the athletic side, 100% of one quarter it's still 25%. That's right. That's failing everywhere. Right. So you got to deal with the whole person. So I dealt with the whole person. You know, basketball is an extracurricular activity. Certainly. And if I invite you, Dr. Claren, mm -hmm. over to my house for dinner, right. and I say you need all the steaks you want, before you get the second steak, you got to do what? Eat the first one. That's right. He didn't eat the first steak. Right. So how can I give him the extra? That's right. The extracurricular activity. Certainly. You didn't have, they didn't build the gym and put the classroom around the gym. Right. They built the classrooms and put the gym around the classrooms. Certainly. Yes, indeed. So I had to keep things in priority. Yeah. Because if I didn't, then I was going to win at any cost. Mm. And winning at any cost was something I didn't want to ever do. Yeah. I, if we win, we hang a banner. I want that banner to be something that we all can be proud of. Nice. And and the message was that if I'm going to hold my own son to it, you know I'm going to hold your son to it too. Certainly. Certainly. When, when you see that moment, looking back, in, 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 in your in your coaching career, mm -hmm. regardless of what stop is at, middle school, high school, wherever, college, um, is, 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 is that like a defining moment? It was a defining moment for me of who I was as a coach. Yeah. You know, but it's not the first time I did that. Okay. I did that before. Okay. And we got a different outcome. We okay. won, and we won the North Division at okay. Beechcroft. Okay. But I had a I had a rule that if you don't come to practice, you can't play. Right. And I had a uh, a big man that went to Ball State. Yeah. Named Mitch Hankins. I know Big Mitch. Me and Mitch played together. Hey, you boy. I know yeah. Big Mitch. And so we were going into Mifflin, and we had to beat Mifflin. Okay. To win the North Division. He, you know, he, he missed practice. Yeah. It wasn't an excusable miss. Certainly. It was, you know. Whatever. Yeah, just yeah. a kid being a kid. Kid being a kid. Right. I didn't play him and we won. Right. You know, that same kid called me after he graduated from college. Okay. And we went out. To, he said, I want to take you to lunch. Certainly. And you know what he told me? And it brought tears to my eyes. He said, Coach, he said, when you didn't let me play, he said, I hated you. Yeah. He said, but now that I look back, he said, if you would have let me play, I would have become a basketball tramp. Ooh, he said, and you yeah. made a man out of me. Nice. And tears ran down my eyes. Certainly. Because I was so proud that I'm looking at a young man yeah. that grew up. He's a man now. That's right. I don't have to worry about him anymore. Right, right. Because he understood what we were doing. And to me, that's what coaching's all about. Certainly. You know, Joe Paterno, put it in terms that 
that I couldn't put it into words, but he said it the way I felt. Someone asked him after he won a, a, a championship, yeah. won a national Whatever championship. Man, what, man, right. He asked me, is this the best team you ever had? And he said, no. He said, I got to wait five, ten years from now and see what they're doing in their community. Mm. He said, my best team might have been my 0-10 team. Right. See, and that's what sports are all about. Certainly. Teaching you how to become a part of something yeah. that's bigger than yourself. That's right. And to give and not demand, trusting that everything do you will come in the jet streams of your hard work. Certainly. Isn't that what being a husband is? Yeah. Isn't that what being a dad is? Right, certainly. You, you know what I mean? Right. And that, to me, that's what coaching's all about. It's not about winning at any cost. Right, right. Well, And, 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 and I said defining only because— um, let, let me share it with you. So, so I'm going to give you a little peek behind the curtain mm -hmm. of Columbus, Ohio community basketball discussions. Mm -hmm. Right. So 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 when, when we're talking about you, when you're not around. <laughs> right, right. Right. That comes up a lot. Right. About mm -hmm. that moment. Mm -hmm. and, and I only said defining because I think you're right. And, and for all of us to have coached or for all of us that are parents or have or that have played. Mm -hmm. I think I think a lot of people would say. I don't necessarily know if I can make that decision about my own son, mm -hmm. and I and and so so when you when when that decision was made, I mean it shot it, it, you know it is sent shockwaves mm -hmm. through through Central Ohio and mm -hmm. really probably around the state, mm -hmm. right? Because here's the here here's the biggest baddest team on the block, and and then coach makes that decision. But at that moment, I think everyone then said, "Man, that dude is that dude is special." Meaning you, mm -hmm. class act, you know what I mean? Like like that. That's the reason why I said define. So I. I, I I, I hope I didn't put it in any way that, no, that no, you know no. what I mean. But but it, 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 I appreciate it, it, the way you it, said it. It, it yeah. spoke to how, um, as a father and as a coach, you said, "Hey, look, this is our standard for a team. Mm -hmm. This is the standard in my home, right? And so this is the this is the decision that's going to be made mm -hmm. because, like you said, I'm I'm helping raise my son while also helping to raise all these young people who have entrusted their their basketball gift in me, right? Mm -hmm. So so so. Before we get into moving on team-wise, keeping the father hat on, just give us what was it like in the Sullinger house? You got three boys, all of them basketball players, mm -hmm. and they're all close within, you know, within the same age. Mm -hmm. So what was it like in your home growing up with all, with all the Sullinger boys running around, tackling each other, slam dunking on each other, beating each other up? What was that like? Well, you know, the boys want to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So dad, I played against Otis dad, a little bit, man. Isn't, beating, isn't, we out beat, beat, beat up on me, man. Isn't there something else you could have done besides take that away from him? I said, well, he took it away from himself mm. because the rule was there, right? You, you know, but yeah. we we have to stand for something. Certainly, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Winning that game is not as important as sending him off equipped to deal in life. Certainly. And this is life. Right. You know, and I made him focus on Devon Moore. It mm -hmm. was his senior year. Yeah. We were supposed to win the state that year. Yeah. You can never give that back to Devon Moore. That's right. You 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 know, yeah, and as so a teammate. That's as a important. teammate. Yeah. And so I taught him the lesson of of being a part of something big. See, when you didn't turn in your homework, that was all about you. Mm -hmm. But if it had just penalized you, right. then that's good. But right. you penalized everybody else. Certainly. I said the person I felt most sorry for yeah. was the kid that I had to put in to replace you right. that I didn't spend the time with. Mm. And so you have to deal with that responsibility too. Certainly. So your decision, how it affects everybody else. Nice. Well, I think that everyone had a chance to follow him and to see how he responded. Yeah. And the next year he was the Naismith National. That's right. That's right. Player of the year. That's right. We're, because we're, 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 we're going to get to that. I don't even came. want you to give those okay, blessings. Yeah, we're going to get to that. No, no. I, I, I want you to share a fun story in the Sullinger home, if you would. You had three boys in your home. Mm -hmm. JJ, Julian. And Jared. And Jared, right. Just what was it like? Just, just, just give us a Saturday afternoon with these three young men of yours growing up in your home. Well, we, we had... <laughs> Nerf ball. There you go. Come we on. See, this what I'm, this what I'm looking at. Come on. Smile a little bit, man. We, Give we me had, some of that. We had Nerf ball. Yeah. 
buckets uh, on the door, our bedroom door, and then down the hall was their bedroom. Okay, okay. So they, there was a little narrow hallway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they played all day, nice. one-on-one. Yeah. And we had holes in the wall. Yeah. Doors that were cracked where they were Certainly. slamming on each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here's yeah. the one that really, here's the one that really. Okay. My uh, window got, the bedroom window got broke. And so I said, how did the window get broke? And they said, hey, man, uh, my foot hit it. I was actually in my sleep. Yeah. I'm going, hold up. You, your foot's not cut. Right. You know, so as time went on, I found out that Jared and Trey okay. were battling. They were about nine, eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were battling, and Jared uh, accidentally hit Trey in the nose, okay. and they, Trey got mad and threw the ball, and Jared, Jared ducked, and the ball went through. Yeah. <laughs> Went through the window. Certainly. So I, I didn't find that out till after they were out of college. Yeah. That what it, but I knew. See, yeah. So those those are some of the things. The boys, and give me an example, I came in for practice one day on a Saturday during Christmas break. Okay. And so I, it, my wife and I, we were tired because, mm-hmm. you know, been, you know, helping Santa Claus with all the gifts yes, and things. Yeah, yeah, yes, And indeed. I had practice the next morning after Christmas. Okay. And so I just stopped off and got a bucket of chicken, yeah. 20 pieces of chicken. Certainly. And I said, I'm going to take a nap. I went, laid down. I got up. I said, where's the chicken? Right. They said, well, I think you wanted it. Yeah. All three of the boys ate 20 pieces of chicken. I'll bet. You, I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, look, you know, uh, I, I, I know your sons, great guys. And, and, and we we could spend a whole entire show just about fatherhood mm, mm. And, and, and and raising you know quality young people, man. And, and through basketball, all, all your kids played, and, and they're hoopers. You're a hooper family, right? Mm. You're a basketball family. You 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 were going in this direction, and so I'm and I'm gonna keep on going in that same direction. Okay. The next year, uh, you you know, 2010, right? So so now. You go in 2010. You all win the state championship. No, we won 2000. Uh, yeah, 2000. Yeah, 2010. Right? Wasn't the next no, season? 2009. 2009. I'm yeah, sorry. so 2008 okay. was when I benched it. Okay, gotcha. I'm sorry. So I got the years mixed up. So yeah. 2009, you win the state championship. Mm-hmm. You're the number one ranked team in the country. Mm-hmm. National number one ranked team. You receive honors that year as the national coach of the year. Mm-hmm. Jared receives National Naismith Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. H- how do you manage all of that? And, and, and just share, like, like, give me any memory that you want to share about that season that, that maybe all of us don't know about. Because we, 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 we see the championships, mm-hmm. we see the awards and the mm-hmm. honors. But give us whatever you'd like to share about I that. Because that's an amazing season, man, for, I, for a family and for a team. I think that uh, Jared uh, won the Naismith because everyone was looking at him from the following year. Okay. When uh I you know he didn't sit. Mm-hmm. I mean we didn't play when I said mm-hmm. him. And here's here's the game that 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 I think that uh that solid, solidified him for the Naismith National Player of the Year. We were playing Oak Hill Academy with with mm-hmm. Cantor and Abib. Yeah. And they had two seven footers on Jared. One in front, one in back. Yeah. And Trey and JD were carrying us because Jared only had one point. Okay. Then with 14 seconds to go in the game, yeah. he had one point. But he had 18 rebounds. Ooh. So yeah. he was playing the game without scoring. Right. And I raised him to say, it's okay to score one and win. That's right. But it's not okay for you to score one and lose because you're too talented. That's right. And so we were down one. With with uh, about fourteen seconds to go, okay. Well, I knew they couldn't double team, they couldn't double team uh, Jared right. being up one, right? Because I had uh, Trey and mm-hmm. Potts. That's right. No two boys. You leave one of them open, they, they can shoot the lights they, out. They're gonna shoot it. Yeah. So I went to Jack, called Jared's number. They said, Coach. I said, Look, he got to do it. Mm-hmm. Jared finished the game with three points. Wow. And we beat Oak Hill by one. Nice. And so. I think that solidified him as a Naismith National Player of the Year yeah. because he played without scoring and then scored when he had to score. Certainly, certainly. In a big-time game yeah. on national TV. Yeah. Now, 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 how do you and your wife, right? Because I, I've, I've spoken to other parents of high-profile kids. Mm-hmm. H- how, do, how do you balance the number one player in the country in your home 
And you also have to you also have to spread your love as a coach to all of the other eleven kids, twelve kids, thirteen mm-hmm. kids on the team. How, how, how do you balance that? Because I mean, I see some coaches who just struggling to just have a a, 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 a starter that that you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So so how, how how did you balance that piece? Well, at home he was my son. Mm. At the okay. gym, I was his coach. Yeah, never mixed the two. Okay. So I couldn't talk basketball at home. Right. Because I couldn't talk it with everybody else. Now, right. if they ask me, certainly, now nah, that's fair game. Right. But if they didn't ask me, I, I kept basketball out of the house. Right. And I kept the house out of the gym. Certainly. And there was one time when when uh, Julian and uh, Jared, at different times, they weren't on the same team, but okay. where well, they were to be son in practice. Right. And I gave him bus fare and told him to catch the bus home. There you go. They, they weren't welcome in my practice. Right. The rest of the day. Yeah. Because I, no one else talks back to me. You ain't That's talking right. back to me. That's right. And, you, you know, call your mom. Yeah. Or, or, or can't take the bus home. Right. You, you, you got me? Yes, indeed. That's how, it's, that's how it's separated. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? But well, I, well, you've done a great job of it. Well, it was hard. Okay. Because there was times I wanted to raise my head up and look at and say, why don't you just rebound the ball yeah. a little bit better? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but I yes, couldn't, indeed. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't fair. Yeah. Everyone has to have their own little bailiwick. Mm-hmm. You know, and when we get beat up out in the world, we come home and let our hair down. Yeah. We got to let our kids have the same... Mm. They got to come home and let their hair down. Yeah. So that's like when your kid goes out and someone says some nice things. And you go, you talking about the same you kid? You're all right. Who you talking about? <laughs> you talking about my kid? Yeah. Right. But, you know, it's what you hear outside the home that counts, mm. not what in the home. Because we all come home and let our hair down. Yeah, certainly. You, you know, so yeah. we, the real kid that I hear that I'm raising right. is what I hear about out in the street. Yeah. And so at home, you know, they, man, that's whack. So I let them do it, you know. Right, right, right. And at the end of the whack, I say, well, this is how we're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the beauty of it is, man, there's a lot of lessons that people can learn from you, coaches and parents. Um, and, and, and even me having an opportunity to sit down, I'm, I'm raising a young man in my home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and, 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 you, and you gave me some nuggets and some takeaways here. And, um, you know, like, like the beauty of it is, the, the, the decision that you that you made that you that you were that, that you made and you said look you know what um what I'm doing and what I believe in means something um every coach that's out there right now can mm-hmm. learn from that right I mean I mean in my opinion mm-hmm. a, a, every coach can say hey look um because he, he, here's how you, you wasn't just sitting um your son I mean you were sitting a, 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 a young man who goes on to win Mr. Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like on top of be, you know being mm-hmm. the, the the Naismith National, but I mean, he's mm-hmm. Mr. Ohio, best player in the state, all mm-hmm. those things, and and that's a huge decision. I I, I want to take you down memory lane for a moment, and and so we're going to shift a little bit now. We're going to go coaching strategy. We're going to have okay. a little fun, right? When you look back at your time, and we'll use Northland. Let's take mm-hmm. Northland as the, or maybe Beach Rock, whichever mm-hmm. pops into mm-hmm. your head. Name another. Either coach like or 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 student that you can remember preparing for an opponent that you thought was pretty good in the city league. Who who did Coach Sullinger think was pretty good in the city league when you were coached? Not someone on your team. One of one of one of our other sister schools running around out here. Who Esteban was pretty, Weaver. Okay, but did y'all play against Esteban? Yeah, okay. when I was at Reynoldsburg. Well, well, I want to hear when you were coaching oh, that, either at Northern or, or, or at Beach Crawl. Yeah, I, I want to hear a time. Because, oh, well, yeah. well then yeah. I, I, I can tell you, we were getting ready to play Beach Crawl. I mean, Brookhaven. Okay. And that's when they had the the, the Gwen brothers. Oh, yeah. And they had uh, Terry Glenn. Yeah. And, and June all that. Henley and, and those guys. And June Henley and all yeah. those guys. Yeah. And uh, I remember preparing for them. Okay. And I was watching, and I, I, I watched them. I went on scout, and I kept saying, we can't feed the fire. We right. can't feed the fire. Yeah. And, the, and the players said, well, what do you mean by you can't feed the fire? Yeah. I said, we can't let their press make us go up and down the floor right. and pull up and just shoot jump shots. Right. I said, because that feeds their fire. Certainly. I said, we got to reverse the ball once we beat it. We got to reverse the ball from one side to the next and try to get a decent shot to slow them down. Certainly. And we beat them. And nice. Steve uh, Blackledge said, Okay. In the paper, he said, yes, "Don't please. feed the fire." Yeah, and that, that was one of the things because I know if you can't run, you can't run with them. They had Certainly. too many people to they run too with. Many. Yes. So indeed. what you do is is you take that pure athleticism away yeah. and make them make decisions. Certainly. 
and it, and it kind of slows down athleticism. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I use uh, uh, the boy uh, that was at Detroit uh, that came from uh, UConn. What's his name? The big boy, uh, Drummond, Andre Drummond. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Pure athlete. Yeah. Very low IQ basketball. Okay. And if you let him run from one baseline to the next without impeding him, yeah. he'd kill you. Right, right. But the NBA picked up on that. Every time he passed somebody, they bumped bump. him. Somebody a little bump, bump. slow him down. Yeah. Then he had to resort to skills. Yeah. And you see he played his way right on out of the league. Yeah. Where is he yeah. at now? Right, right, Nowhere. Right. Yeah, and I, you, well, you know, and, and so the, the beauty of like the Brookhaven, and, 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 that's a, and that's a fond memory. I remember those guys as well. Um, obviously for Terry, you know, man, you know, rest in peace. Mm. Um, but that was a fun bunch. Like you said, oh, I mean, man. you know, June and all these athletes flying around the court there. I mean, you, you, your body of work and the time that you have been contributing to Central Ohio basketball is phenomenal. Mm. Um, I, I'm lucky and, and very fortunate to be able to have this opportunity to sit down with you here today. Um, before before we before we began, we were talking a little bit about coffee. Mm-hmm. And um, for those of you that know, Oh, oh, Coach Satch here. Coach Satch loves his coffee. I do. If you're, if you're lucky enough and you see him out there at the coffee shop and you can get five minutes of his time to bend his ear and, and get a basketball nugget or lesson of life from him, you're pretty fortunate. And, 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 I'm, and I and all of our listeners are grateful that you came in here to the studio today, um, shared these nuggets with us. I got so much more that we can still get into, mm-hmm. um, but they're giving me the signal that we got to start to wrap the show here today. All right. be, be, before I before I say the sound off in the, in the ending parts, um, I, I want to share like like again because we started this way, and this is in my initial write up. You're a former city league player. Mm-hmm. You're a coach. You're a parent. You've gone on and you've won all these awards and accolades. Um, your, your body of work speaks for itself. Your boys are out here um, as young men, you know, do, do, doing their part, like you talked about, contributing when you when mm-hmm. you gave that kind of example about what are they doing after school. Mm-hmm. Um, great basketball players, fun to be around. And so I, I will let you share on your ending note anything you want to say, man, that maybe I didn't bring up in notes today. Um, you know, the floor is yours to so speak on whatever you want to speak on. Well, I just appreciate the opportunity. And you made me aware of your intro of a large part of my life has been with Columbus City Schools as a as a student, as a coach, as a retired teacher. You know, I love our city. Certainly. And I love our students. Yeah. And I want what's best for our kids because they're our future, man. Yes, indeed. And there's a there's a million avenues to get to the same Mall, mm-hmm. and as long as your avenue is pure, yeah, and you have the kids' best interest at heart, Certainly. go do your thing. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we draw from everyone we've come in contact with. Yeah, and that becomes our value base. But it's not ours. We've learned it from other people. Certainly. And if I can contribute one little thing to your value base that's listening, yeah, then I'm having a successful day. I, I love it. You you also mentioned um, married forty seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, ours. I, I I talk about support systems all the time. It is extremely difficult to be a coach's spouse, mm-hmm. right? Because of the demands that coaching pulls on people. Mm-hmm. And so um, we we shower her with love also for allowing your gifts to be a part of so many others and people that you've touched. Um, can I say just one thing too? And indeed, one hundred percent. Here's here. There was one day. I had to go out and I went to help a kid study and he wasn't home. And I found him at DeSales. Okay. And I walked into open gym and said, I was at your house. Right. And I took the kid home. And my wife, when I got home, my wife said, you know, you got kids of your own. You you know what I mean? You're you're gone a lot. I said, baby, all I'm trying to do is be the teacher that you want for your kids. Mm -hmm. She never said another word. She I understood. Yeah. She understood. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And you, and she's an educator also. She is. And she she's my jewel, man. Yeah, man. I love it. I, I, I love the energy. And, I, and, I, and, that's a, and that's a special story, man, because um, that's just nice to hear. You know, mm. um, hey, hey, look, I'm fortunate. I'm blessed. Appreciate you, Coach Sellinger. Appreciate you, too. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to throw out, the, of course, the Satch 
appreciate you, Coach Satch Sullinger. You know what I mean? I think now everybody gets a chance to hear um, where, where the nickname comes from. Mm. Your body of work speaks for itself, man. Thank you. And so I'll uh, I, I'll do our outro here, man. But um, just just a lot of respect and love for you. To you come coming Saturday to the Jared Classic? I am. I'll be out Saturday. You know, I'm always out there. I'm running right. around. Yes, so I'll be right. out there Saturday. You, you know me, Coach. I, I, hey, look. I, so so while I'm no longer coaching. Mm-hmm. My wife also gets it, and, she, and, she, and we had this conversation. We kind of have a joke in the summertime where we say, um, like, you know, I'll see you next year. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, she kind of knows the school year is a sprint. And, and so I'm out here trying to do my part to, to mm-hmm. give back to as many of our kids and, and coaches and support our, our people mm-hmm. that are out there doing this wonderful mm-hmm. work. And um, and she gets it. So, yeah, I, you know, I'll be out there. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Just make sure you always make time for her. Oh, yes, indeed. Saturday yeah. is yeah. date night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, And indeed. that we, we, every Saturday, that was her day. Yeah. And so we, it's still to this day, Saturday. And sometimes we yeah. don't do anything. Certainly. But I'm home now because I, you know, sometimes I get on the nerves. I'm there too much. There you go. There you go. I get it. I get it. Well, look, hey, look, so um, all of our listeners, be catch, be sure to catch all of our future episodes on Radio WCBE 90.5. FM. Also catch us on Spotify, Apple, or the platform you prefer to listen to your favorite podcast. Follow us on Instagram at City League Sports 614. He is Coach Satch Sullinger. Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. Vince Clarno, and this is City League Sports.